Hi, everybody. This is Martha. I'm a relationship counselor and clinical sexologist, and I'm so happy, so lucky to get in touch with my colleague in the US. Uh, she's a certified sex therapist, uh, licensed, licensed social worker, and also has a doctor in sexuality, and it is Dr. Donna uh, Oriobu. And we are going to make a four part uh, video series. So in this first video, I just want to ease us into it uh, and it, let her introduce uh, about herself and more about her work, how you got into it. All right. Hi, y'all. Um, my name is Dr. Donna Oriowo. I'm a sex and relationship therapist in the Washington, D.C. metro area. So in the United States, um, how I got into sex this work uh <laughs> honestly it part of it is that people used to just feel so comfortable telling me everything that i thought i should get additional training so there's that piece of it um and then as far as the education piece when i was um in undergrad i just figured i was going to be a regular regular psychologist that's what i was going to do and it got to a point where I was so, I, my interest in sex and sexuality was within the work that I was already doing. So I looked it up, I saw that there was Widener University in Pennsylvania, a place where I would be able to go and get this other training in sexuality, and I went for it. And here I am. <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I see that you also do uh, keynote speaking and uh, you run a lot of workshops. Tell us more about that aspect of your work. Oh, well, um, honestly, there is a lot of information just in general about around sex and sexuality. So um, for schools, I have been able to go into one of these programs called Sex Talk um, Educator Edition. This is to get teachers and it's comfortable talking about sex and sexuality so that when a student does ask them questions, they can give honest, clear answers while redirecting them back to parents or whomever, because I recognize that not everybody is teaching sex education in that moment, but I do believe that it should be and is a community effort, uh, which means that everybody needs to have knowledge and be knowledgeable in order to answer questions in a way that, um, that students need. Um, in addition to that, I then created Sex Talk Parent Edition, which was just to get parents talking about sex and sexuality, but really it's also to unpack your own stuff. Because usually if we have not been taught, if we haven't been spoken to, and we've been taught that it is a taboo, it's dirty, it's nasty, then we sort of carry that on even by accident into the naturation that comes behind us. Um, other than that, within the field of sexuality, I that it is, very whitewashed, um, that we are not culturally, culturally or ethnically aware. So part of the work that I do is trying to re-infuse that into sex education. Um, because if you can't see someone's culture, if you can't see their race, then you really are not seeing them as a full person, which means that you probably are not getting everything that you could from a sexuality course or um, any other sort of sexuality-based intervention. So I teach things like snatching edges for our black hair matters in sex education. That one's talk exclusively about colorism and texturism. Um, so colorism is color, skin tone based prejudices, and texturism is texture based pre um, prejudices that will hold, um, and how that sort of ends in the field of sexuality. And um, I have a currently six series that we call the dark of the berry, um, where we study humility, power, and um, humility, power, and I can never remember the third one, even though identity, there we go. <laughs> identity, humility, and power in sex education and in mental health in general. So that one is uh, my baby, that program, uh, just because it's, it's really about, um, getting to the meat of things as it comes to race and sexuality and being able to sort of confront ourselves, um, have an understanding of what power dynamics look like, especially in um, educational and therapeutic settings. And then really being able to some of that humble pie because 
we don't all know everything that there is to know, and we need to be able to humble ourselves and not continue to perpetuate the same harm within the communities that we go into. So that that uh, that program is like my crowning glory. It's my baby. That's really awesome because um, I, I I I did see on your uh, website that uh, you offer this webinar about Black Hair Matters. And um, now that you start to talk more about it, like it makes so much sense what you're saying, which is if you don't see the race of the person, you don't see the full person. And also all the different uh, innuendos about like how our culture and our race, like we need to be addressing it so that we really start to unpack it for the people. And um, because for me, my background is, um, I did my doctorate in the US. And so everything that I teach is quite um, westernized um academic scientific knowledge mm -hmm. and how do i bring it back to my people and actually uh, make it in a way that makes sense to them because a lot of them just find that i'm very westernized in my thinking and approach and how do i really um cut through all that and really communicate with my own people <laughs> And so that is something that I, I um, um, am I right to say that you actually develop all these and um, uh, went into all that as opposed to like other sexuality educators who also ha happen to be uh, African American and they, they don't they don't talk about these. Um, um, yeah, I think that everyone has their own sort of specialty for me color and texturism. Uh, what it looks like to be in my black, what it looks like to be in my um, hair was such a huge part of, of who I was developing while I was in that program. Um, just for background, my high school was very diverse. I was one of the most diverse places, um, one of the most diverse schools that I know of. I think that a lot of people have been in um, high schools that may be more white or more black, but ours was just super diverse. Um, I went to High Point High School, um, and that's it, like super, super diverse um, to the point where they had cultural um, sort of assemblies um, every month or however often just to celebrate the differences that we had there. So, I mean, there was an Asian club, there was a Caribbean club, the African club, there were all these clubs, and I was in the Asian club. <laughs> um, but uh, I was in, you know, like there are all these clubs, there's all these groups, and there were all these assemblies, you know, to display the, the, what each culture has to offer. So it was an opportunity to learn. So I went from a very diverse high school to then I went to an HBCU, a historically black college or university. I went to the Morgan State University, beautiful school in Baltimore, Maryland. And that was me being, I, I felt like I was cradled in the love of my own people. I mean, it was black people as far as the eye could see, right? And I went from that, from diversity to black space to being at white graduate school. And I felt that shift. I felt how black I was in such a white space. And it was also at the time where I was, um, I had just cut off all my hair. So I was going natural and I, I have this natural hair. I've got this dark skin and I'm in this white, white place and I'm feeling so out of place. And then on top of that, like with the way that the education structure was set up um, to be in the, the, in those classes with the students and the experiential type learning where I felt like I could not be fully present because to be fully present was to do harm to myself. Because there was almost no consideration given to um, diverse groups at all. It was very, it wasn't just westernized, it was white. And in its whiteness, it left out so much. And I wanted to refocus that in the work that I was doing because I knew that who I was gonna serve we're going to be black and that as much information as they were able to give me and that I was able to use, I had to work twice as hard to take that information and make it into something that makes sense for the people that I serve. So, I mean, does that answer the question? Yes, I, I so love how you shared um, your background because you, you went through different kinds of uh, uh, school environments and um, then it made you realize all of what you wanted to focus on so as to help your people. 
Absolutely. I love it. So sometimes our biggest pain becomes the, the biggest ways in which we can serve. Absolutely. And I think that being, being at the, you know, the school where I got the master's and the PhD, that there was, I felt so much ire. I was so discontent. I was so upset so often um, that, you know, that Black was just not a part of the conversation, that Asian was not a part of the conversation, that Latinx was not a part of the conversation. And it was, it, and it was just presented like, oh, this is just basic sexuality information and that you can do what you need to do with it. And I feel like this is a way in which so many people let themselves off the hook. They don't have to learn anything because we have now made whiteness the default. So the work that I do is about stripping that away. So whether it's in the therapy office, um, so doing one-to-one -one work or doing couples work, or if I am teaching, if I'm doing a keynote, if I'm doing a training, it is about stripping away the idea of the default to really get us to do good and deep work. Because if we're not doing the good and the deep work, then as far as I'm concerned, then you're moving backwards. It's either you're going forwards or you're going back. There's no staying still. Because even in our not moving any way, any way at all, we are still supporting white supremacy. So we have to actually do work on an internal level and an external level to actually backtrack, backtrack that, to do something different, to be radical requires actual work, not just, oh, I'm just not supporting it. I'm like, you're not supporting it, but you're still sort of are. Yeah, I get what you're trying to say. Oh my God, I'm, I, I don't know why I'm tearing up. Uh, okay, so this is the first video where I, I asked uh, Dr. Donna um, about uh, herself and her work. Um, in the other videos, the second video, I'm gonna ask Dr. Donna to uh, summarize a little bit about the uh, Black Lives uh, Matters movement and what's happening in the US. For people who just want a nutshell summary of what's been uh, happening in the US because outside of US, maybe we are um, thinking that what happens in the US doesn't matter to us. So just to give us a little bit of an idea about the whole Black Lives Matters um, kind of uh, a thing that's happening that happened in, in the US last year. So, so this is the first video, uh, tune in to the second one. <laughs> 